Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we're going to paint a winter scene together that you voted on. So I had put up some topics in the poll section of the video, and you guys voted on your favorite. And luckily, I saw that before the poll disappeared, so we're okay. <laughs> so today I'm going to be showing you how I would create that concept or that topic step by step. And the other fun thing I'm doing is I'm letting you guess what we're painting as we go. Now, listen, at the end of this, watch this whole thing. At the end, I then go back and put the finished painting in the thumbnail and you get the finished painting as a reference and I provide a traceable. So during the painting process, when you go back to follow the lesson after the live, you will have those there. So the not knowing is really something that happens for the people that come for the live stream. That's a fun thing that they get. And then on replay, um, you can choose to know or not know because we'll have painted it by that. But right now we don't know because it's from my imagination and the suggestion got put in. What do you think of that? I think, yes, I think, I think that's the best kind of thing. So the first thing. The imaginative uh, thing. <laughs> I think on this one, though, because it's such a structural uh, subject and because we're going to have to sketch Ooh, it at the beginning. It's structural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has, it has some. It has some Is it structured like a mushroom? It's structured like a structure, oh, an you, organic you, living thing. Do you have a mushroom jacket? On? Um, I confused me. Yeah, I'm no, I just, because it's similar color scheme. Oh. I was thinking, be nice to have a, I was like thinking color schemes and oh. I thought it matched my color scheme. I don't even know. Well, Red, gonna, Christmas, it's oh, what I got. Yeah. I get the Christmas sweaters are all green. They don't I'm show up on up, the green screen. I'm always so. up, I'm always Mushroom up. Mushroom sweater shows up on the green screen is festive. It's what we've got. All right, let's go over today's uh, materials. Okay, I want to do materials. Let me yeah. put the materials. Gotta just come here and make sure button, my um, and then go, materials. palette is set well. All right. There we go. So what I have here is an 8x8 eight eight surface. And I'm using the colors uh, Cad Red, Mars Black, um, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, and Titanium White. I think that's all I am going to need today. And then today I am going to be using a pencil and a T-square to kind of bisect my canvas. And then I'm going to kind of explain what i'm drawing and why i'm drawing it and then we'll discover together what i drew <laughs> that's, that's does that sound, that sound fun to you that, that sounds, sounds like fun a to se me? sequence of events so well. on this eight by eight surface i'm going to mark it at the halfway point with a pencil i'm just using a regular pencil um generally i don't do pencils uh with acrylic painting because the graphite sometimes can stain or come through the um paint but this one i don't think that's going to be an issue and you'll see why, and I'll explain why I made that choice later. Um, I, I What it is, is I was doing another painting yesterday that I'm working on to go with chickens. And uh, I, I had some color scheme thoughts I thought I would work on today. <laughs> you get to do it with me. Doesn't that sound fun? I've marked it again in, in half again. And so what I've done is I've divided this canvas up into halves and into quarters. So there's an upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right. And that will help me kind of figure out the scale of what I have going on. Now for the sketching, I will probably use a dark paint so you can see it. But I recommend that when you're on the replay, this is when you'd use the traceable to transfer it on the surface. Um, if you're here with me on the live and you're going for it, well, you're going for it. So let's enjoy it. Uh, but if you're here on the replay, you could do the um, traceable because that will be available to you by then. But right now we're going to use this to imagine something and then to draw it. Now, the subject that y'all picked was Christmas puppy. So let's right now, if you've been painting with me for 10 years, you know, right now what I'm thinking is like, please don't age up the puppy. Please don't age up the puppy. Leave the puppy a puppy. Don't make it an old dog. Don't make it a fed dog. Because <laughs> I tend to age up children and animals. And the way that I do that is I over elongate the distances between structures like nose and eyes and ears. So I'm going to be trying really hard not to do that because I said puppy. If I had been smart and just said general Christmas canine, then whatever I painted would work completely for the prompt. But since I said puppy, we're working. Now you get to see me work a puppy. So now we're bound to puppy. Okay, let me look at the chat. I see Charlotte Pax's mom crafting with Victoria, Grace Porter, Kimberly, and Amethyst Rock, and April, who is saying thanks for the well wishes. And I'm always so grateful at our community. So divide and half and half. Did you do the step already, babe? All right. We divided. 
Step one was scale, dividing it half and half. Scale, so far. scale. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to think of is I'm going to kind of think of scale. I'm going to take a little bit of my black and brown. I'm using this because you can see it at home and because it will blend into both the puppy. It will blend. Thus the brown colors in the background. Because uh, I've decided to do the palette in a very limited way and make it neutral. Um, mm, can it be a Christmas puppy? Yes. No, it is a, a Christmas bug puppy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could be any puppy at this stage. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to say that I need some neck maybe. And I want um, the top of the head. Uh, let's put the focus of the face in this general zone, I think. Right. If you are Donna Posca and you are doing a pug, pull out your pug now. I think I'm going to do a forward facing canine. <laughs> Should have said been much less specific than puppy. And I'm going to be fairly central on the center axis of the face. So you could do this technically with any any puppy. All right, I'm going to make a little line here that I think I'm going to be speaking of to the to the muzzle. I'm going to come down. Let's see how we do. You can kind of see I'm I'm scaling out general shapes. This little forward shape is just the structure that I think of as muzzle. Now the trick has got to be I've got to get these things close enough together to keep the ch the puppy like expression. I'm going to want to make some distance between the eyes, which is why it's nice to divide the canvas like this. And I am going to say that the eyes are close to the outer edge. And they don't sit on it and they are kind of teardrop shape is what I like. If I was doing a pug, I think w I would definitely pull. I do not have enough pug paintings in me to just pug, like breed specific, but I would probably just move the nose up into this region and include a um, downward facing kind of little scowl is what I would do for that. And then it's dark black here and dark black around the eyes and then kind of an ochre color around the whole puggy and then black here. So maybe I have more visual information for pug than I thought. I don't know. It, it is sort of hard to even kind of know, you know, guys, how you want things to, to always be. All right. I'm going to make a little ear line kind of coming off here. So far, fairly, fairly puppy. I'm going to come back with the ears in this kind of way. So they're sort of framing the face. They're going to be a fold over ear. Hmm. And then you got to decide how long you want them to be. And how much like, I don't know, motion and stuff you might want in the ears. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to kind of round out the face because the face structure comes in. There's a canine jaw and it comes forward. So I'm just trying to think about that facial structure when I'm doing the puppy. The if that face of the puppy. You know what the nice thing about dogs, hmm. though, is? Hmm. Is that like when you're drawing one, if the, if, if the features kind of wander into another breed, that's okay. You're okay. That's fine. Well, I wasn't ever planning to do a pug, no. but it might be pug-like. But I, am, but I, I mean, think I'm going to... I think I had an earlier request for another kind of dog today. And I think... Just maybe uh, I'm going to mid-muzzle. What I'll do is I will mid-muzzle the puppy. Um, if I was pugging uh, the nose that I'm about to put here, I would move up. I would just move up the entire muzzle structure and have that be much more up. Hmm. And I would definitely reference my own dog on that one. All right. So I like that nose structure. This is kind of the little chevron is what I feel like the noses tend to be. So it's sort of like a little curve over. And then, mm, I feel kind of okay about that. I'm not unhappy with these dis distances. So that's what I'm sort of checking, guys, is the distances. Right, and I'm going to come here, and you're going to see a lot of these. I expect to be darn good at the Santa hat. 
just darn good. It's on the snowman. It's it's on the Christmas cow. Uh, two Christmas cows. <laughs> it's on <laughs> so many things. Now this puppy. So this red hat is there. If you just didn't want this, you would just paint the top of the head and not add the red hat. You could do flowers or something else entirely too. But I keep going over to the uh, um, left to right in my bias on my hat. So now I'm going to flip it over uh, right to left. And the reason I do that is growing up in Western education um, and being right-handed, it does give me a spatial bias on my canvas to orient the flow of traffic from left to right. And, that, and that's why I'm always thinking about how do I get people back onto the canvas? Like, how do I keep their focus? How do I hold it? But beyond that, you will notice, like, if you come from an area that writes right to left, you may be biased in your structural organization to organize in that same way the items in your painting when you're composing original stuff. So since that's sort of what we're thinking about, I thought we would uh, talk about that a little bit. Mm. I think I might move this hat a little bit lower and make it a little bit fluffier, if that makes sense. So I'm just using the brown and black there. I'm just making it a little bit fluffier. And if it's going to come over here, let's... I'm going to do the downward bend to the hat that way. It's like, if I don't bend it now, I'm never going to bend it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. There we go. So now we have this sort of nightcap style hat with its little fold over. And I think actually I'm gonna do the fur in front of the fold over so that I'm gonna layer that part of the hat structure behind the fur band on the hat. And then I gotta decide um, on kind of like how we're gonna do a little chest down here. And I think I'm gonna be just as general as I can about it. I might put a little star or something right there. Mm, I might put maybe like a, I don't know, maybe something there too. Like a little, little, I don't know. Is it called a star on dogs? Uh, <laughs> like a horse? I don't know. Don't know. It's dog That's spot. what I'm wondering. And I, I might want to widen this out. All right. Let's hope it worked. We're there. So uh, you will have used a traceable. If you are on the replay, and if that is the case, but you may have a slightly different dog because we're at the beginning, and I don't know. I have a question then. Where um, would I have gotten the traceable? On the website, theartsherpa.com, under the traceables tab, there is a keyword search because there's 2,500 of them, so it's a little hard to go through. What else and can you do on the website? You can find 2,500 other video lessons, go shopping at our art store, join our patronage, read a really awesome blog about watercolor uh sign up for the newsletter you can spend a whole day there just wandering around doing stuff just doing stuff learning things doing stuff being awesome like you are video 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 um video, video. i'm right. about the height of a great dane says grace porter <laughs> i love just reading the chat and just That's seeing it. where y'all are at and sometimes the random comments are so strange i've never seen a great dane uh sally's like i know this painting is going to be super cute cinnamon will pull it off here's what you for the second step? I'm ready for the second step. The two step. The two step. Now, I think on the background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a neutral background or maybe like a gray background. So let's make a little bit of our gray using white and black. And I'll start with a middle gray. Not too light, not too dark. And I may go in over my lines a little bit. I'm using a three quarter inch catalyst brush. It's nice, it's wide, and I'm doing kind of a, a messy, random little stroke here, and it's going to give me roughness. It's going to give me roughness, my friends. We want roughness. I can overpaint on the ears again, and I can overpaint into the hat, and the reason that I can do that, guys, is that um, it gives me a little bit of room to change my mind. I just don't want to erase my line where I can't see it anymore at all. Mm. So when you guys are using the traceable, one cool thing you can do is when you see me sketch out something in paint like this, then what you know is that you could sketch it out in paint like this over the traceable after. Because I will have to deal with that. At some point in my painting, I'm adding more black up here at the corner and I'm brushing kind of down. 
and then back across and then down and it's creating kind of a little fade I'm just checking show questions real quick. Give me Thank a you, second. Heather. Remind me later. Live show questions. Go to the current chat. Crafting with Victoria Clark says, does Cinnamon have a dog? I do. I do. But when we Not were here. moving to Ireland, we um, had to uh, put them. We couldn't, like, when we were supposed to go, when the original plane tickets were booked, we found out that it wasn't safe for the dogs to go and that they had a different thing. So our attorneys had had an immigration plan for the dogs. And they ended up going up, staying with this just lovely, lovely trainer and dog sitter who, out of the goodness of his heart, makes his dog food by hand. Mm -hmm. This is important to the story later. By hand, I tell you. <laughs> Which Twix thought was the greatest thing any human being has ever done in the history of ever. Yes. And so now what we have is two very, very happy dogs with a very, very happy person. And we're having to look at those decisions from that perspective. And I'm not saying that Twix has literally stopped speaking to me. <laughs> but she wants it made clear. I don't make dog food by hand. <laughs> But that's there, so they're with that. They're doing, they're playing in the snow and having handmade dog food and a lovely life while we figure out all this stuff. I'm going to go over the ear a little bit and into that Christmas ball a little bit. I'm telling you what these structures are because we're not running a picture in picture. Though keep in mind, guys, I will put this on the website. You can print this out later off of its video page and use it as a reference, which is probably a better reference for you anyways. Um, I love the picture in picture because it reminds us what we're doing. And it lets a person who's new to the chat come in and see the progress and what we've got going on. But sometimes um, I need you more focused here than on that little corner shot, if that makes sense. I'm adding a little more black to the gray. So what I'm trying to get is a kind of streaky, rough little background. Mm. Rinse out. I'm going to let it dry. I think I'm going to do a second coat on this one, as per the usual that I do. And I will be right back, guys. And welcome to Emoji Chat, Crazy Hiker. You can enjoy all of the funky little emojis that we have with everybody else. <laughs> and and no, Misty, I have not seen a great, great Dane in real life. I've like seen them on TV and stuff like that, but never in, never in in person. I think they're a pretty rare kind of dog, although I don't get around a lot of dog circles either. So you know what way? I don't get get around a lot. I've never seen a Great Dane in real life. Oh, I have. Yeah, they're well, huge. I, I just I haven't seen a dog. Wolfhound one. too. That that dog just makes you question your sense of scale. So does a buffalo. Certain animals just make moose I've makes you just moose. question your sense of scale. You're like yeah. some animals you run into and they're so big. You're like, I think I don't understand the size of things. Right. You expect things like elephants, giraffes. Yeah, be that's big. You're like camel. That doesn't you're surprise like, you. Check, yeah, big. But you get to a moose and you're like, Whoa. I just didn't understand that at all. Or a real bear. All right, I'm gonna mix a darker gray. Uh, so it's not a black, but it is a darker gray. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to kind of pull it down in a staggered and irregular fashion. This is a great way of doing an abstract background for a subject where you want the subject to be the most important thing. So by making it an irregular background. Oh, someone has shared. Uh, oh, my goodness, Kim. That dog is too big for you. One of our <laughs> moderators shared a picture of their dog as Skype for John. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm going to get off. I'm going to, mm. you know me, I get to chat oh, man, and then I'm just dog. lost. All right, we're going to keep going. I just love to see it. I think your dog is very cute, Kim. <laughs> All right, so once I do that dark gray staggering, I'm going to come in with quite a lot of light gray. That's a big dog. And also kind of stagger some. Yeah, that's creating an irregular and kind of abstracted pattern. 
it builds the world that the dog is in, but doesn't really specifically create so much information about that world. I might get a little more black here. That the viewer feels, I don't know, I think the kind of almost kidnapped into your idea of what this is about. This way, when you do it like this, it lets the viewer imagine what this bokeh streaky environment is. Dry everything and we come back. I'm going to show you what you do next, which is probably blocking in. I mean, let's be honest. Probably just blocking in. All right. So it shouldn't take her too long to dry that. We're going to thoroughly, thoroughly dry the surface and hang out here while we have to wait for anyone who got whisked away to the commercial breaks to come back because... YouTube sort of is instigated commercial breaks and it it happens whether we don't like it or whether we like it it just happens but what we can do is if we hit the button then it will delay doing it again for a minimum amount of time now the cool thing about that is uh what oh oh she lost her glasses I'll have to help her find her glasses in a moment she just looked at me like I was saying something crazy I'll show okay. you a peek. What, see what I'm working on? It's halfway through. I, we were recording and I just realized uh, I run and do a thing and so I just stop, which is why you, I will be in two different outfits and it'll be all crazy. But, want to see what it is halfway through? Let's see. Let's see. To go with chickens. He's a crazy cow. That this is, so there's a patron cow. Uh, this is a regular community cow. Mr. Silly Cow, because I thought it'd be fun to go with chickens. I'm trying hard to get a pig in on to match the chickens before the season is over so you have three yeah fun things all right now on to our next step now on to our next step which is really going to be just trying to think about how we block stuff out i may continue on with this brush i'm going to begin with a little bit of my red and my black together red and black uh together are they can make a brown if you get it tinted you can just sort of darken the red really beautifully with black it's not something i do all the time sometimes it's nice to do with doxazine purple when i want more of a kind of grapey mauvey merlot kind of value is when i get the docks in there but when i want it to be just red Sometimes it's just easier to get the black in. And it's okay if it's any range of brown to uh, reddish brown. That will be fine. That will work in the piece. I'll let that have a dry for a second. And then I'm going to come here and maybe come under that little chin chin chin. I'll go down over my canvas again. I've got to think about if I want to do the star or not. Now what I can do where I, where I might be coming out over my gray is I can just sort of flick here. See that? And that just makes a little bit of fur. Doesn't have to be hard. Doesn't have to be stressful. Now I'm going to take that corner again, go flick, see I'm flicking. That just kind of says, oh, well, oh, we're a little fluffy. That's not too terrible. And that's a pretty big line out. So we're saying the ears are big and I'm going to come along this top line and flick out a little bit of fur just along that top line. Bisect in pretty sharply, and then I'll shape out the ear a little more than this, but that way I don't make the ear overly big before I get a chance to really shape it how I want it. Something over in chat. Question, Cinnamon, while waiting for watercolor tutorials, I bought a uh, five color gouache. Will that paint like acrylics? answer pax's mom uh it's it has some similarities with acrylics it has some strong differences 
Uh, until I get some gua stuff up, try Tim Gurney. Not sending you away. I'm just sending you somebody that's smart and good at art, gives really great art information that sets students up to be painters uh, and and enjoying, you know, art as as like a real part of their lives. I just I just really I think he does a good I just think he does good work. <laughs> I'm just kind of flicking out that ear a little bit and I'll play with that some as we go. But that way we've got flopsy mopsy ears, so that kind of line on the ear. It looks messy guys at this stage and that's okay. How these things become other things is sort of fascinating, I think. Now this one, I definitely won't be able to do the fluffs on the side. And bring that little ear off a bit. Now, I know it came in, I'll have to put the ball back. And if I've got to put my background in, that's pretty easy. I can just come in and see how having a gray background lets you fix a lot of stuff and change your mind about a lot of things. Kind of moving that ear out. Now these are pretty close in value, so I'll either have to change that background value a whole lot, or I'll come in with lining or something. Now I'm gonna come in here. And just real quick, I want to kind of really sketch in with my black and the corner of my brush. And a little bit of black along that little muzzle. And then I'm going to go ahead and get into my brown. Little brown muzzle. I think I'll come a little bit on the sides there and that will pull that a little bit out too. Kind of from the base there. And I think I will think about adding like a little brown and white at the chest just to be super cute. I'm gonna add a little brown eyebrow there and another equally spaced little brown eyebrow as you do come up over the top of the muzzle flicking out in a fan the brown it's messy it's and it's okay that it's messy at this stage guys I think I'll make these a little bit smaller and then I will kind of sketch those back in just to check their size. I'll do that sometimes when I'm working guys is I will come in, keep the placement of something like, oh, eyes go at this level, but also uh, make them smaller. You know, I'm actually, I might even resketch them and I understand where they are. You can go around it if you've got the traceable and you're doing it on replay, I think I might. Because it's black on black, just let those be out. I'll move them as I need them moved. Now, while all this messy, messiness is drying, I'm going to come get a little bit of gray. A little bit of gray. I'm going to just paint that very light fluff in. See what I'm doing? It's a light, light, light gray. I'm making curved strokes. I haven't switched brushes. So the other day, uh, um, I'm, and, 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 and first, no, I'm not upset. Okay. Um, and, and this might upset other people, but it didn't upset me. 
which is uh, somebody had written me to say how I, um, you know, use a bunch of different brushes to force people to buy brushes. <laughs> Considering what a short amount of time I've owned my art store, that's quite a plan to do this for 10 years to sell brushes eventually it's in an art store. Plan. But I got to thinking about that comment and I, I like to read comments from you guys, even ones that maybe are a little salty or negative uh, from the perspective of like, what's really going on? Like, what are they trying to say? What, what is happening that inspired this? And I realize is this idea that somehow there's, you've got to have these tools and these brushes and you got to change it out and there's all this stuff. And sometimes when I do weird little things like, I'm going to come fluff this out a little further out. So I can see it with a slightly lighter color. You know, um, sometimes I, I will do things like this. You can see that, look, look how much of this puppy I painted with just one brush. Now, I, I will switch brushes. I won't just do one brush this whole thing. But by using the angle, the toe of the brush, that's this point here, this line, I can do a lot of work pretty easily, can't I, mm -hmm. with one brush. So, yes. Tools are important. I like them. I do think that they help make life easier, for sure. That said, the magic is in you, not the brush. Let's try everything. We'll come back and we'll do the steps. Let's start making Mr. All right. Cutie Pants cute. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'll find the brushes for, uh, uh, glasses for her. She's looking for glasses. Oh, do do do. Hold on. Hold on. Got to push the button over here for the thing. Okay. So... Uh, how do you dispose of dirty water and uh, April and Lindsay after getting joined the group? Should I share a painting in the Facebook group? Yeah, so if you join our groups, feel free to share paintings. They have there according to the group rules. You, they're, they're the group rules are many groups, up there. Many they groups, have many rules. Re reasons for being. Please, uh, please check those those group rules and post accordingly. How do you dispose of dirty water? You know, April, there's several different ways. There's evaporative systems. There's di there's different um, chemical ways of doing it. Um, cinnamon, do you want to... Oh, you were doing great. Oh, I was just sort of rattling on until you came Yeah, in. but it was good rattle, so I wasn't going to um, interrupt a completely accurate rattle. You can check out uh, Golden's website. Uh, make uh, Just Paint has an article on how to make your own paint disposal system. And they, sell a, they also sell one. So what yeah. it is is that they um, are separating the acrylic polymer solids out of the water. And um, that's why all the methods that John listed are what we traditionally do. is just about getting the acrylic plastic out of the water. Yeah. And there's a chemical process that's actually really safe that cleans the water that Golden uh, developed. And they did release how to build your own for free. You can do it from the garden center. They also sell something called Crash Solids Kit. You can check that out on YouTube on their YouTube channel. And they'll tell you, they'll tell you both how to make one and you can just buy from them. Yeah. I mean, just to be honest, the, like if you just have a pan that you that you can just let it all evaporate in, like you just dump the water and let it evaporate, then the paint just dries on the on the bottom and solids out, then you just peel that out and throw it away. Yeah, like it's not. Some common. people use cat litter. Some people yeah, use straw. So many crash salads. You just use the couple chemicals they get at the garden store. Um, and 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 that's just you know uh, we have been studied. We're not the greater. We're not a, a strong polluter but as more people paint we could yeah. be house paint is much worse yeah it's what house paint and car paint is where this the big problems are so they don't ever look at us but Industrial, we can do little yeah. smart things as artists we can do that for sure <sighs> yeah <sighs> all right new step <sighs> oops Creates a lot. Says it's too bad someone feels that way i believe you show us different brushes to show us how they can help make painting easier i really appreciate it and I don't always use the same as you do. And you don't need to, Creates a lot. You don't need to paint the same thing as me. Listen, it's a weird world right now. If where you're at in life is like, I just need to hear some voices while I'm arting, you're welcome to come and work on your own stuff and hang out with, with us while we're painting. And I totally get it. Like, be crocheting and listening to us painting. It's it's completely okay. I think that um, uh, I what I would hope for everyone who watches me is that... Um, you know, I'm giving you guys the information you need to have a great time in your own home studio. Now, I, I will admit, I love seeing everybody's painting. It's, it's, I totally get a reward. Oh, have we put a step up? Yep, we have. Okay, I'm going to move on to getting the eyes in, but you talk about the painting. Oh, yeah. You get the eyes. Well, I'll I'm make just the making a light gray. What are you making? A light gray. And what? I'm going to come here and try to sketch in some 
great eyes. Was that just like a black and white light gray? Yeah, black and white light gray. It's not not overly complicated, not like with Mm -mm. Payne's gray Mm -mm. or some sort of magic blue. It's just black and white. What I'm doing here is just trying to make sure that my eyes stay on the same plane. Oh, so, I so just you don't mean, get a wonky, wandering eye? Yeah, because I have a tendency to get a walking, wandering, wandering eye, and so sometimes the T-square helps me keep everything sort of on the level. All right, so I'm going to curve underneath. Do another little curve about that same size. And we're going to go up. And I went up there. And then I'm going to come down. Makes the eye shapes. And this is going to give us this sort of sweet, sad puppy eye shape. i placing them far apart, very far apart on the face and close to the nose. It helps create that sense that there are eyes there. I can use black to thin a line if I think I got it too thick. I'm going to come down to my little nose here. To the nose. To the nose, to the nose, to the nose, 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 and make some gray, some gray, hey, hey, and come across the top of the nose with a gray. It needs to be not as light as, say, some of the grays we've been doing, but light enough to register as gray at the top of the nose, because that's how we're going to catch a nose shape. Bend that, bend that, bend that, bend that, bend that, bend that. And I may have to come back with black. And what do I mean bend it? I'm curving my line. See how I'm curving this line? In that blending, even in the shading, how it rounds that top of the nose. Makes him have a nose. Yeah, I'm trying to just round that top of the nose very easily, just taking a chill time to do it. It's very nice. Yeah. And then we're going to come down here and... Let's give a little nostril to the side. I'm, I might have over lightened this so you can see it, and then we'll we will knock it back. And then just a little bit of a hint of a little line and another little hint of a line. And then what I'll have to do is knock back some of these light lines. It's not terrible. We're getting there. Just trying to make sure that these are. So if you over lighten something, what can happen is that it becomes just uh, too much. And it pops forward into the surface and distorts the whole piece. But if you get it just right, then suddenly a couple little lines just feel like a dog's nose and it's that's the balance right just a little bit of a highlight right there kind of a double line highlight it's a weird little thing but i like it I'm going to take a little bit of my black and my brown together. I'm going to get dripped on by my water bucket for some reason. I don't know why. Weird. Dripped on by the water bucket? And I'm coming underneath. Yeah, dripped on by that water bucket. That was so strange. Mm-hmm. Just that brown. Maybe it, had, it, it was the drip waiting for you. And then I'm going to come into my yellow ochre. And back with my black. Just making sure that this is now going to be what I like to call readable. In other words, when we look at it, we can tell where the muzzle is and where the dog body is. Alright, we're gay. Oh! Gay Spangler is going to do the gingerbread in the hot chocolate. It is a fun one is a super fun one so many so many tutorials i'm gonna come here and grab a little bit of my white and black 
The Christmas tree ones are pretty good. Yeah, so There's many Christmas, several tree, Christmas ones. tree ones that are good. A lot of uh, Christmas horses. <laughs> and then there's glitter beards. <laughs> glitter beards. We gotta. I. I wanna. I gotta check on glitter beards. See if we could re-release that on the channel. So what I'm doing is I'm taking gray and I'm fanning it around a little bit, just a little bit. It's just starting to talk about maybe. Um, and come here with a little bit of my brown. See, it's the center, and then I'm fanning out. And then a little bit of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre. Oh, isn't that cute? A little burnt sienna and some yellow ochre. Maybe a little bit of our brown kind of coming up. And you can see I'm kind of curling up that brush stroke with the black and brown to sort of shape our cutie patootie's face. I'm going to come here with a little bit of my ochre and I'm doing little light strokes little light strokes and as I go in towards the little corner in that mouth I need that to be darker so that's what we're doing we're making little light strokes until we get to a place where we know we can make it a little bit kind of darker and I'm going to sort of feather this around as well I'm just trying to find the shape of the muzzle Look at Dodo's Kura Patootie. Let's dry everything and we'll continue on and I'm going to show you what you do next. All right. Loving it. Take a breath. He's looking so good. He starts to get cute from here on out. So it's all downhill from here. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us on this guy. He's looking really, really cute. Super excited about how this is going. And, uh, Really happy. Uh, <laughs> thank you, April. You know, just you guys hanging out and being here with us and being part of our community, that's a big, big deal. It's a huge part of what makes it, um, you know, makes it possible. So you guys just being here with us and yeah, being part of our seriously. lives, we really love it. And yeah, there's a Zoom tomorrow. Uh, if you want to vote on what it is, you can go by Patreon and vote. It should be a public post. Um, I may start doing the vote posts over on there, but you don't have to be a Patreon to vote. Mm. I may do it on Facebook. It just depends on which platform has decided to create tools that make it easy for you guys. So we'll try one over on Patreon. If it works great, that's where we'll go. If it works better over on the Facebook page, we'll do that. But the polls keep disappearing on the videos. And so for these where you guys are deciding what we paint and we just do this creatively here so you can see how the creative process works, um, I may uh, be kind of moving those all around. And yes, Zoom class tomorrow. That makes sense. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my bird step. sienna. Give me a new step. I've got that just on the toe. And I'm going to come into my little eye area and I'm going to make a little kind of U or C just to kind of talk about the puppy eyes. Come here and kind of little black to those outer corners for just a second. And I'm going to come in and put some black in the pupil. A little round black in the pupil. It's not bad. Trying to make sure that I've got a nice little area around my eye. I'm 
I think I might get into a slightly bigger brush because I need more paint on here. So I am going to grab my number six Catalyst Princeton. That's just because I want to paint a little faster than I am. I like I like how much April con it is it con con contributes to our community here. Yes, so thank very you, April. much. We really appreciate you being here. I oops and painted out a a bean, so I got to put a little brow bean back. Come here with a little bit of brown and bring a little brown up. Yeah, curve that up. Just making it work. So it wasn't very good coverage down here. And by using a bigger brush, I can come back in and improve the depth of the black, which will make my other techniques work better. When I go to create visual clarity between the face, the black fur, uh, the different markings in the ears and how we get, and it's not going to take a lot of lines to make that work, but when we're going to say, okay, this is fur or, you know, this is the beginning or the end of an area on the puppy, I'm going to kind of just make sure I bring that there. We're exaggerating again that happy, happy, happy face. Now, I think I'm going to come in and grab a little bit of my ochre. Coming around there, and you can see that sort of strengthens that. Let's grab a little white into our ochre. Look at that. Just, oh, there's a puppy there. I'm going to grab a little bit more white into the ochre and just kind of come in and do the chin a little bit. And if it's a little bright, then what I do is I come back with a little darker ochre. But I don't give up on the technique, right? There we go. I'm going to add a little ochre coming down. just a small amount oh I oops there so I just come back with some black and I'm gonna feather up on the side some little bits of ochre just feathering it up just to kind of um, shape the face if that makes sense like face tape <laughs> so obsessed I don't have any face tape on today but I am obsessed with face tape that stuff is wild come here and blend back with black so you can see I'm coming up with brown and then kind of back with black and I'm just trying to give our face a little sh our, our little uh, a little shape to our face so I'm gonna get a little bit of brown and black and I'm going to come here and just make sure that I've got a little feathering out that speaks to that and then I'm gonna come into my yellow my yellow ochre just using the corner of the brush Add a little white and come over the top. My brush is dirty with a little bit of black. How those different colors are happening. I'm 
It's got a little bit of extra black on there, so I wanted to make it more yellow, and so I put some more yellow in, and now I'm cleaning that up. You can see me kind of smudging and blending. Look at us clean that up. And his little face is taking shape, isn't it? Very much taking shape, the face. I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre to the eye beans, I think. Hmm. And while I'm here, I'm going to take a little bit of red, come to the top of the hat. And dry brush it down a little bit. You know, Daniel, normally we don't allow plugging of other creators and things in here, but I'm going to let this one fly. MST3K is, they're, they're, they're cruising for four, season 14. If, uh, if, I was if, like, who? Who now? If, if you guys are a fan <laughs> of Mystery Science Theater, apparently they're working on season 14. You guys can go over and try to check, that, check them out, support them as creators. We definitely... Uh, <laughs> ep- I was oh, like, what happened? You freaked me out so much. Oh, yeah. I was like, what happened? No, definitely. So I'm just adding a highlight to the top of that. Then I'll come back over into my black and brown and we're going to kind of crease up. I just, I, I think... See how I'm doing what, these creases okay. here? Yeah. Where we're adding these into there, say, trying to say that the hat is bent and folded in this way. I'm going to blend that out. I'm blending it out. I'm softening it with my brush. I'm moving the paint while it's still wet. So now I've got, see how the hat is come both behind this fluff and as behind and in front of the ear, it's created some layering. That's a nice thing that we can think about um, in painting when we're making our own stuff is like how we tell that story, where we cho choose to lay our hat kind of a thing. And isn't this Christmas puppy just too cute? You just see me sort of blending, creating a blend. I have to paint my puppies for Christmas cards, says Amy. I agree. That is a thing. Oh, by the way, when you guys hand paint Christmas cards, or if you do a painting and you make Christmas cards for your family, you may write us to get it from us, but that is an exception to our no mechanical rule prints and reproductions, obviously. But since it's totally not obvious, I'm telling you, uh, even though I just said obviously, because how would you know? Um, but that's a true story. You don't have to uh, worry about that. Did we do a new step? Okay, I think we're going to do a new step. We got pretty far in that. Um, I think we are, have the beginning of a puppy sort of showing up. So now we're going to... Did we ever figure out where my glasses were? I think that's where I'm stuck. All right, John's going to find my glasses and microwave my coffee. And what's happened is, is I will paint something I can see right now. I was inclined to paint the eyes, but I need my glasses. So I'll work on the fur up here for a second. Um, because that is just a simple kind of overhead thing where John can leave me while he's getting my glasses and uh, eating my coffee. All right, so I'm going to come here. I've got my round. This is that number six Raphael sepia, and I'm going to come here and make little curving brush strokes. I need to see if it being white out here will be enough of a break. And I'm putting it out kind of thick. If you see this right here, it's sort of a thick application and I'm just curving the brush strokes and just implying fur. It's, and fur is one of those things where it takes a minute to get it, but once you start to get it, you'll love it. You'll hate it and then you'll love it. And so if you're at the hated stage, don't worry. Loving it stage is coming soon. Just doing little curved brush strokes. I will leave some of the grays showing underneath. More of my white will be here at this edge. And then here, uh, here and through here will be more of my shadow. So more of my white at the top and then coming in. 
And this is just my round brush and I'm just making little strokes. It's okay if they're thick and show the paint. That's all right. In fact, sometimes that's even a good thing. Uh, that's not reading glasses. Those are seeing glasses. I need the white ones with the things uh, glued on them. That's them. That's what I'm looking for. Wonderful. Oh, you're going to clean them too? I mean, that helps, but pff, I don't know. You're going to spoil me. See how by leaving some of the underpainting showing underneath, it creates that sense of texture and depth that you need. Oh, I love it. <gasps> Telling you guys, I'm having the hardest week. And you, the classes and, and the stuff that we're doing, the Zoom classes, they are how I am getting through. I, I just... Apparently lost the ability to talk about it because I said it and then just never said the other thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's just been that kind of a week. Have you ever just had a week that was just rough enough where you kind of blacked out? So good things have been happening for me for the week. We had Thanksgiving. We had wonderful company and all that stuff. And I'm trying to stay in there, but also in life, you know, life always hands you a mixed bag of stuff. And so some weeks the painting in on YouTube with you guys becomes even more of a blessing for me than you could ever imagine on any level. I'm just, sometimes you guys keep me going. Now, so these are just little curved strokes and we're just doing little swirls and curves, swirls and curves. I'll come back into my gray. And I might make sure that there's a slightly uh, darker run of swirls and curves over there on that side. And a little bit at the bottom, maybe. And let's do something similar. I'll do the slightly gray right now. That's a little bit of black and white at the bottom here. little gray right there and then just a little bit of white up top what's funny oh because i'm just like oh i love how i'm like fully on camera like i'm gonna get this drink and paint this brush stroke right here and i'm not gonna stop for either <laughs> What could go wrong? bringing a little black line up that's like kind of like a fold or a crease I'm making this a regular little shape again that's maybe a deep fold or crease i don't have a lot of deep 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 uh shading and everything but a couple of places on the folds of the hat i find that it does help the velvety texture of of what's happening so i will put a few little shadows and if you ever just crush some velvet and look at it you'll notice that it definitely definitely has a has a value set <laughs> so i'm going to take a little bit of my just red and my number six catalyst And around some of my shadows, put kind of like a just red highlight and at the top of the hat, maybe a few.
And sometimes it's easy to kind of loop them out so that they have a little bit of, uh, they imply a little bit of a fold. And this does kind of begin to give us our folded hat. And then I'll come in and get a little white. And I'm adding a little highlight there. You can see I'm just placing out highlights just a little bit. Kim says the puppy is adorable. I agree. I like agree, Kim. I love this puppy. Puppy and I are friends. Just trying to create a little fold of fabric here, maybe. All right. Just a little bit of a hat. What do we think of that, my friend? When we come back, we're going to do some details in the eyes. Some details? Yeah. All I right. might dry this too. I figured you might need to dry it. I figured it. you might need this to. This is a drying place. Oh, uh, I've been meaning to ask, what is a catalyst brush? So brush companies like Princeton or Raphael make a variety of brush lines for different mediums. And those brush lines have exclusive filaments and tack on and those tack on um, formulas have different widths and then they also source different animal hair and fur and bristles and things and so they give them different names catalyst was a line that princeton created for heavy body paint at the same time i created the art sherpa brush for heavy body paint um don't know if they were related or not it just happened mm -hmm. uh and so it has a much firmer filament on it and it comes in a long handle and a short hand if you needed I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow ochre. Did you dry it? Oh, I didn't. Did I? I no, answered the question. Answered I didn't dry question, it. Probably you dry. dry. <laughs> you can probably put up a step. It's probably dry. I just want to make sure that you're... Uh... Yeah, I'm okay. You're okay? It's dry. Okay, so we're going to go on to... I monologued so long I dried step it. Step eight. Step eight is great. I'm going to come here and add a little kind of curl of that gold. back with the brown just kind of shading out the color part of the eye even though it's quite dark and come over almost with a glaze around the eye I'll put the line back but I just want to get it better so you notice how I had knocked that one back that's what I'm doing I'm just knocking it back a little bit Yellow ochre and white. Just a little curl under that eye. Doesn't it give it almost a glow? It is super special. I can't even explain how awesome and special it is. Just. I'm just making sure that. I think looks right. Oh, I like the glowing eyes very much. Okay. So now I'm going to come here with a little bit of gray. And with a fine line. Eyes put in. Curve up that little line. <laughs> A 
little bit of off gray right here and then there maybe a little light in the corner of the puppy eye then some just pure white paint on that reflection isn't it nice i, I kind of love it now while i'm here i'm going to take a little bit of my paint and kind of fix my nose line here a little bit i can be very very particular if i feel like it that's okay nothing wrong with it i'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and kind of come here and think about my little eye beans and i'll come around paint around my eye beans get my eye beans because they look like eyes of fire right now <laughs> like accusatory eyes <laughs> but we're getting there we are getting there that's so funny all right He's got his eyes looking yeah. all puppy eyed. Well, you got to have some eye beans, but it's it's finding that right positioning. The eye bean can be really challenging. What mm -hmm. I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to put this one in again because I'm just. You can kind of see it hidden there. I think I want to kind of try to reset those eye beans because I, I think I might have moved my eyes wider. Oh. And they're not quite reading to me the way I want. And actually, I really like that the minute they were out. So that lets me know that something was just hmm. reading weird. That helps. So sometimes if you just feel like it may be off, you need to... Yeah, you just reset it and think about it and then put it back. And that can be hard when you're new because you feel like everything you do is, you know... Um, there we go. That's nice. Sometimes you talk about like stepping away from it, getting some distance. Yeah, I think every once in a while we have to get distance from a problem, distance from a painting, distance from ourselves. <laughs> a little distance fixes a lot. And when you're right on a problem, you can't really see it. Grab some yellow ochre. The front of the eye beam, I'm just kind of lightening it and it makes it glow almost, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. No, oh, he's looking super duper duper cute. Can I, I say, April, really you're amazing. amazing. You're amazing. Okay, I'm loving that. Got a little bit of my white and yellow again. Just trying to find, one of the things I want you to notice and one of the things about designing or even teaching live or any of these things is how important it is to get the right value. So what you see me here is just finding the right light or dark for the readability of the piece. I think I'm going to switch back into my filbert, my friends. Yeah. I like the shaping of it and I like the control, so I'm going to go back into it. And I'm going to refine. So some of what you don't see in my life right that's going on is like all the designing or sketching or working it out on my ipad just trying to make sure it's a little bit oh i like that that's darker that's better okay yeah so sometimes i'll be like oh i gotta i gotta i gotta get it where it's the right light or dark and you play with it until you feel like you've nailed the 
the value of it. That's looking pretty good. When did we last do a step? Mm, a bit ago. A step ago. We can do a step now. Like, like how good, much of a step? All right, step nine. Step nine. All right, I'm taking a little bit of burnt sienna. And... Coming from the bottom. A yellow ochre, and I'm coming from the bottom, and kind of creating a little chest star. A little burnt sienna. Just a little chest star. I don't know this dog. <laughs> I have dogs I know I could have painted. Could have painted butters. Could have painted bug. Could have painted a lot of things. I don't know this dog, but hopefully you know this dog, and this is your dog. If this is your dog, let me know. This was your puppy. <laughs> He needs a name. I'll have to put him in the patronage to name him. Just yellow ochre and white. This is one of my favorites I've done. I don't know where this came from. I may be a sad puppy. <laughs> oh, thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Maybe this week I'm a this sad is, puppy. This is a very happy. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Okay. This is this is actually secretly a very happy puppy. Uh for just for Deborah Evans too. Um this face is because this is the face that realized that this puppy's family made pot roast. Yeah. And they cooked it for eight hours. And this puppy has been smelling the pot roast for eight hours and just wants a bite, just one, just a bite, just one, because it smells amazing. And he's, he's trying to will the knowledge into his human that this, this pot roast must come into his belly. That's what is happening here. <laughs> All right, let's get some gray. And I'm going to come here and oof, oof. Off the side, sweeping kind of over. Sweeping. Maybe a little darker dark. Not too much, man. It's a darker gray. And can you kind of see how it just implies a little bit of sheen on the hair? Mm-hmm. Mm. Do the do this here first. Do that one first. Yeah, I'm thinking. Just a little bit. So it's just a little bit of highlight to talk about the way the light might might be on the fur. So, trust me, less is more here. If you do more, though, don't worry about it. It's art. More is more. More is more. It's your painting. Nobody has a right to know, and they don't. And I'm not, like, your family doesn't write me and ask me if you did a good job. Huh. <laughs> though maybe they are the kind of people that would. They haven't figured out my address. Don't worry. And honestly, if they ever did, I wouldn't tell. I would be, like, most brilliant artist I've ever seen. Period. Dot finished yeah that would be my response just trying to make sure that one all the little spots of the canvas are covered and that we've got a nice little sort of there's a a, a fluffiness i think that i'm trying to to get into a fluff a fluff a fluffy fluffy fluff i want the fluff the fluff. I think maybe I'm going to experiment with... Okay, so this is black and brown. I'm going to add white to the black and brown. Mm. Such a... Don't love it. Do not love it, guys. Huh. Sometimes when you're painting, you will do something and you will be like, that is not an improvement. Decided to change it. You have to. And that can happen. That will often happen when you're doing work 
that is from your mind. And that is probably one of the differences um, So a lot of the paintings I do for you guys aren't necessarily pre-painted. They're from a photo reference that I will um, license, right? And in that, I might make a change or two. But the photographer has done a lot of the work for me. Mm -hmm. Found the lighting, set the scene, created all the stuff. Photographer did a lot of the work for me. So when I'm doing like more original work where I am setting the scene, finding the lighting, all of that, that's just different. And you don't see a lot of that online because there is some do a thing, change your mind, do a thing, change your mind. Very, very. And, and honestly, I really like it. So yeah. it's very hard. And I'm not often here in my art where I. Nope. See, I shouldn't even have done that. I just soaked that back up. That mistake. Oh, you yeah. Sometimes you can vacuum back with your. It just isn't going to get better. I don't feel. I don't feel. You just got it. Yeah. I feel like I nailed it, and I'm just going to call it a done thing. And that happens to me too. You guys, you know how you realize? Like, how do I know when I'm done? Uh, the invisible process that you don't see when I'm painting is. This is how I know when I'm done. I'm like, I'll try two or three things, and they just none of them work. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, I, I realize I've gotten there. Anything else I want to do, I now have to do a whole new painting to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. I would do five or six different puppies with different hat positions and different backgrounds. And I might do several of these in this color scheme and try different amounts of what I'm painting and what I'm not painting to get to it, but not just keep working on this puppy. This puppy is done. <laughs> all done notice i didn't do my brightest red in my signature i did my darker red so i am signing in red but i'm not signing a bright red i'm still using my number six yeah this turned out so good he's so cutie puppy everybody thinks he's adorable he's everybody adorable. thinks this is adorable and you have you have hit the adorable on the nose i do adorable the cow. You guys want to see the cow again? Of course we want to see the cow again. Because that's the other painting I'm working on today. Then I have half half of birds. <laughs> I should do live. Finishing paintings I'm recording halfway through. You figure it out. <laughs> We're just going to go live and finish a painting and you'll have to guess what I have like is. these birds over there somewhere that somewhere. I was like half, like they're going to be more funny birds and they were Christmas birds and they were wearing Christmas hats and they were red and white and green and it was like in there and I was like maybe some snow. It was a whole thing and then I didn't know. I think I was recording the overhead so I have to at least finish it for the timeline. Somewhere we'll finish Somewhere. It. Somewhere out there, on there's a SSD. cute little puppy who is going to go into the patron group on Facebook so you guys can name. I will also make a traceable and put this puppy up on the reference and everything so you guys can paint along. Um, I hope you really enjoy <laughs> him. Uh, Christmas cow. We've, we've done I, the landscape with the Kraken and the snowman and the Yeti. With the snowball fight and the red bridge, the red Christmas bridge is upstairs. So I can't show it to you. <laughs> You'll have to check. Kevin is coming to see that. The red bridge is the video before that, but it's all now crackened. So that has happened. And then before that, we did this one on the blind paint where we figured it out while we were painting. Um, you guys have been doing good. I think the thing that's been the hardest is figuring out how to get the snow tuned in. Boy, do I get that. I don't know how many paintings before I figured out. Sometimes I like to do wet snow. This is my halfway point yep. on Mr. Cow to match chickens and they'll be a pig or something. So I feel like we're we're getting there. We are getting there. We're getting there in this season. I don't know where the birds are. Do you know where the birds are? I don't. I don't offhand. I don't see them around either. I know. They're not just... We'll have to find them out. The somewhere there's three... Ah! Nope. That was a tree. Never mind. <laughs> and then we've done the tree with the snow, the pine tree with the snow in the time lapse. For you guys who are like, look, I don't need to see every pine needle. I just need to see a pine, pine needle thoroughly explained. Yeah. Then tell me where the pine needles go, and then I'll add the pine needles. So there's the pine tree like that, cow, Christmas puppy from today, and 
whatever we do Sunday and Tuesday. So I'll see you Tuesday at 1 p.m. If you're doing the Zoom class, I'll see you Sunday at 1 p.m. If you want to try the Zoom class, you can go by and try a free trial over on Patreon. I set that level. I, the reason I set the $15 level as my free level instead of the five um, was this. Uh, and not the 25. Let me explain that. The reason I set the 15 uh, for free week trial is this. That way you can come in and try the Zoom. Figure out if that's the right jam for you. If it's the right jam for you. Oh my gosh. Perfect. You got to try it out and, and do that for free. But it also gives you access to all of the patron stuff that we've ever built. The hands class. The... Oh, the multi, the, the Santa with the tree and the presents, the fireplace and everything, that big painting, the big bird painting, the big green life painting, the big still life painting, all the big, big paintings, all the vlogs, all the weird group courses, all of that. So it lets you have all, all of that. The reason I didn't do the $25 is that included the discount at the store and potentially art coaching. And I can't handle, uh, I can't afford free coupons. <laughs> And I can't, I can't handle that many people asking art questions. So <laughs> that was the thinking. But 15 is free so everybody can try it. If it works for you and it's right for you, do that. And that is awesome. And if it's not, even if the class is two-part, I'll give you both parts of the class. I'm not here to art cop you or be an art gatekeeper or art bounce you. I'm here to help you paint. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to do is help you paint. And that's what's going on in in our world. I hope you like these weird, they could only happen on YouTube. They could only be in this space classes. I love them. I hope you love them. I love you guys. I hope you're having a good holiday. Uh, lots of love and light to everyone in your life. Yeah. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. I'll see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.